The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we continue celebrating this great feast of Easter, let us, who have been risen with Christ from the dead, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries and confess our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, bless Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, we have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified. This man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy the place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now in this Easter season, and especially because we're going through this, we're still going through the pandemic and the restrictions that are still in place, that we shelter in our homes and minimize travel and keep distance from other people, uh, physical distance, not uh, social distance. It's we're still supposed to be connected to one another, just need to be careful. This is a time that we really need to do the work of God. Oh, I, I know many of you are doing a lot of work. Uh, your houses have probably never been cleaner than now. Your yards are immaculate. There's not a single weed growing in any of them. Maybe some of you have even started doing uh, paperwork that you have put off and thought, well, now I, I have time, I can do this. Uh, you've been doing all kinds of work and still feeling, especially those of you who are participating on this online mass, perhaps the, the lack that this work of God, the, the liturgy, which is the work of the people giving praise and worship to God that you haven't been able to do that. But we heard quite clearly Jesus say, this is the work of God. Have faith in the one he sent. It is our faith that is the greatest work. First of all, that it is God's gift to us 
a gift that was freely bestowed to us in our baptism that God lavishly poured his life and grace into us as a free gift, not because we deserved it, not because we had earned it, not because we worked for it. It was just God's gift. And the way that we exercise that faith is by doing the work of God, believing in his son Jesus, believing that he is risen from the dead, believing that, one, that he died and suffered and died and was buried for our sake and for the forgiveness of our sin, and that he's risen and that he is with his church, he's acting with us, accompanying us, even in our most difficult moments, such as you might be experiencing now with a pandemic. But that's the work of God, is having faith in Jesus and not giving in to discouragement, uh, to despair, to a sense of being defeated, but continuously and constantly having hope that springs from this faith, this belief that we have in Jesus. We see in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which we're now reading throughout the whole Easter season, and I would recommend to you in your, in your spiritual reading, uh, your reading for Scripture is start, start uh, at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles and continue through. This is a great time for reading the Acts of the Apostles. It, it's, we'll be hearing that during the liturgy. But we see in the example of St. Stephen that he is convinced of Jesus' resurrection. He's filled with grace and power. And the Holy Spirit is with him. Even though there are so many who are opposing him, who are trying to trip him up, who are trying to bring all kinds of false charges against him, still... He does not give in to that discouragement or despair or feeling down, thinking, what's the use? Why even bother? Why am I trying? No. He gives testimony to Jesus. And we heard that his face looked like that of an angel. I've always uh, mentioned that most times people think of little cherubic faces as in, in holy paintings where all these little cherubs are around the feet of Jesus or the feet of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And they're kind of cute. And they're, they're made to be so innocent looking and idy idyllic. I don't think that's what the scripture means when it says his face appeared like that of an angel. Every time an angel appears in scripture, people are afraid. They're, they're terrified. In fact, the, the, the word has to be given to them, do not be afraid. Just like the angel Gabriel told Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. Or the angel that told Joseph, in the, do not be afraid, Joseph. You see, angels, they inspire fear. It's that awesomeness. It's that fear of God. But not to be terrified, but to be awed. To see the very mystery of God being revealed through the face of one of his servants who trusts, who believes, who hopes, who loves, and is giving witness to Jesus. I hope when you look in the mirror today, at some time, when you get out of your pajamas now that you're watching the Mass, and you go get ready for the day, that your face starts to look like that of an angel. Because... You're doing the work of God. You're trusting, you're hoping, you're believing in Jesus, the one that God sent into the world to save us. 
Let us pray. We pray for the church that she may be busy about doing the work of God, promoting the gospel, preaching the word, so that people can have hope in their life and be brought to faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for a swift end to the pandemic, the coronavirus, not just here in our own state, but throughout the world for so many people have been impacted by this. and Many have lost their loved ones and have this terrible heartache because they weren't able to even give them a proper burial. And so we pray for all who have been impacted, all those who have been affected by this. And we continue praying for the encouragement of the doctors and nurses and all those who are serving us, the public, in, in ways that sometimes are unseen. Even those who do the cleaning, they're the ones who are keeping the surfaces safe for others. That God may strengthen them, grant them encouragement, and lift them up so that they have the energy to be able to continue doing this valuable work for us. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And that we might do the valuable work of keeping them safe by maintaining this distancing that helps to stem the spread of the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are becoming discouraged, disheartened because of their financial situations and because of the, the isolation that has made them anxious and fearful, that the healing presence of God may be upon them and give them peace and give them joy and may people help to lift their spirits through either a smile or a friendly text or a phone call even a visit a wave from across the street inquiring as to their health for this we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer And we pray for all those in positions of leadership in our government and in business and in the health industry, in commerce, all those who have to make the decisions as to when to lift the restrictions and give us the opportunity to try to begin to live life in not so restricted way. May God grant them the wisdom and the enlightenment that was granted to St. Stephen that they may witness to the truth and help us to follow good science and good practice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And commended to our prayers today are Emmanuel O'Heary, that he may have a happy birthday. May God grant him life and joy for his brother Daniel O'Heary, for his well-being and for his safe travel. And for the repose of the deceased, Andrea Coca, may she rest in peace. And for all who have died, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for you, the parishioners of St. Joseph on the Rio Grande, and for your needs and your intentions, May the Lord hear your prayers and grant you grace and favor this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for your own special needs and intentions.
And uh, I would also add uh, that we remember Anne Marie uh, Keithan, who died uh, this past Saturday. Uh, she's the mother of Deacon George Miller, that she may rest in peace and for Deacon George's consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, hear our prayers. Fill us with the gift of your spirit. Give us life, give us hope, and help us in all of our words and our actions to express our faith and our confidence in you and in your power to save us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi Letare, Alleluia. Quia quemeruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.